Welcome to Universally Judged with Sierra Birchall. On the Universally Judged podcast, we share the stories that you haven't heard from pageant title holders, models, content creators, and actors. In each interview, our guests share a behind-the-scenes look at their life and the lessons they've learned along their journey. This podcast is created in collaboration with Dive Through, a mental wellness company that helps people dive through what they're going through. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Universally Judge podcast. Today, we are talking to the stunning, the talented, the kind Jenna Sims. Jenna was Miss Teen Georgia USA 2007. She has went on to have a very successful acting and modeling career. She has acted alongside none other than Robert De Niro, Morgan Freeman. She also just happens to be dating the world famous golfer Brooks Kepka. She shares what it's like to be dating a famous athlete, how she handles any feelings of kind of feeling jealous. And she shares some really fun stories about one of the incredible things that she started called the pageant of hope. From a teen pageant title holder to a model and actor extraordinaire, Jenna shares a little bit of what her life has been like, the ups, the the downs, the in-betweens, and what she's been able to do to really find and love herself. Enjoy the episode and let us know what you think on the Universally Judged Instagram. Welcome Jenna Sims onto the Universally Judged podcast. Jenna knows exactly what it's like to be judged because she started her career in the pageant world. You were a teen title holder a couple times. I know it's national i don't know much about the national teen title that you had but i do know about miss georgia teen usa you were miss georgia teen usa 2007. what made you decide to enter that pageant actually watching miss teen usa like as a little girl when it was still on tv i shelly hennig she was like the first i think title holder i saw win on tv and she's just so stunning and then she went on to do soap operas and I idolized her, her and Allie LaForce, who we saw on TV last night, those are my two idols. So I I knew I always wanted to do like modeling and acting like as a career. And I think pageants were a really good stepping stone for that. That's so cool. And I've seen a few places you're, you're called a Georgia peach, which I think is so cute because you're from Georgia. I'm from Saskatchewan, Canada, the prairies. I feel like you would describe me as like a dried piece of wheat or something. (laughs) So what does it, what does it mean for you? You're in Georgia right now. What is it? State, yeah. Yeah, that's so exciting. What did it mean for you to represent Georgia at Miss US at Miss Teen USA? It was truly an honor. Um, I got to do, oh my gosh, I'm having to like think. It's been over like 15 years. <laughs> I'm so old now. Such a happy <laughs> then. Um, oh my gosh. It was my, I guess the end of my senior year of high school going into my freshman year of college. So my mom was super diligent about helping me get appearances and I got to meet some incredible people. I got to model, you know, for Sherry Hill, which is every pageant girl's dream. Classic. <laughs> Classic. And Miss Teen USA, thankfully the year I did it, it was the last year it was on TV. So I got to go through the whole like live production experience and made some of my best friends. When I moved, I moved to LA actually shortly after my reign because who doesn't these days? Yes. And um, my roommate was actually Miss South Carolina Teen USA and I'm still close friends with her and a lot of girls I met my year during my reign. That's so cool. What, a, what an experience that, I mean, has obviously taken you through a very interesting path. You have started a pageant that we'll talk about in a, in a little bit, but it also kind of kickstarted your career into the acting world. You are an actor. You've appeared on a bunch of very interesting different shows. I have to admit, I have not seen them, but a lot of listeners will know. Um, give us a few of like your top favorite productions you've been a part of. Yeah. Well, it's funny. Right after Miss Teen USA, I actually had to miss my first week of college. So whenever I, whenever the pageant happened, I flew straight to Nashville to start attending Belmont and I got a modeling agent there. And my very first job was a Luke Bryan music video. He's a big like country star. On oh yes. Yeah. So we know him. Don't you worry. We know. Yeah. We know. So it was my first audition ever. And I walked in there and I was like, I'm Miss Georgia Teen USA. And I'm <laughs> from Miss Teen USA and you're gonna love me and so I booked it they were like who is this like tornado of a human being so I booked (laughs) that job and then 
I ended up doing like a ton of music videos in Nashville. And then that's when I decided to move to LA that I wasn't getting any younger and college can always, you know, I can always come back to college, Mm -hmm. which I never did. And that's okay. Absolutely. Uh, um, Yeah. So then I moved to LA. I booked um, Vampire Diaries is a really big one. I was on the season five finale of Dexter, which a lot of people, I guess it still runs a lot. So people see it, message me like, is that you? That's so cool. Um, I did a Lifetime movie. I was in the Anna Nicole Smith movie. Fun. And then I've worked with Morgan Freeman, Robert De Niro in Las Vegas. And then I guess the one that everyone, well, there's two actually. I was the lead in Attack of the 50 Foot Cheerleader, which was amazing. And then um, Sharknado 5, which is a big one. Of course. That's so cool. And I think a lot of young women for sure aspire to get into the acting and the modeling world. And, you know, I think it's not as easy as people think. Like, I think some people expect what happened to you. You walk into an audition, you're like, this is who I am and you get the part. I think that's how people think it goes. What what do you wish you would have known before you got started? I wish I would have started taking acting classes at an earlier age. Um, I did, you know, I went to Barbizon and did like the modeling school, but that really does not prepare you for (laughs) acting. So I didn't start doing acting classes until I moved to LA. And that's when I really started booking more jobs. So I wish I would have had that experience from an earlier age, because I think I would have started booking more earlier. But work begets work. If you can just book one thing, it kind of gets you on a roll to book others. And sometimes you just need a little bit of luck, honestly. (laughs) It's true. I feel like it's like a right place, right time. Sometimes knowing the right people, having a connection, whatever it may be, that's just kind of life, right? Like that's every industry. It kind of sucks. Yeah, in the beginning, it was all about sort of your experience and your resume. And now, unfortunately, it's TikTok. And when I was in LA, it was how many, it was Vine. Like, how many Vine followers do you have? And no way. Now it's all like they want, you know, the the names within that YouTube and TikTok and Instagram. So I'm, th- I'm thankful I don't live in LA anymore because I can't compete with all those people. That's what some people do full time is TikTok. That is how they make their full time income. It, that's crazy. It's so um, crazy. I do. I do like a, I dabble on Instagram and I make a decent amount, but totally not enough to just float my life. Right. <laughs> yeah. We were, we were actually in LA a couple of weeks ago and we we're eating outside because that's what you do nowadays. You yes. Eat outdoors. <laughs> and there were, we were in Venice and they were just all these, I called them children, but they were <laughs> 19, 20 year olds. Just, <laughs> We were filming TikToks like in the street. Like it was just, LA has just become this social media mecca. And I was just, it has changed so much since I've lived there. It's a whole different thing. I can't imagine. I think for, I mean, coming from where I'm from in Canada, people, if you're filming a story, an Instagram story, like walking around holding your phone, people think you're strange. So if they saw people like filming TikToks. LA, de- it's like just constant. Oh, like. constant. Yeah. Like that's the norm. That's so funny. Do you feel like because of that, then have you ever wanted to shy away from the acting and modeling world because of the involvement of social media? No, I still I still have my manager out in L.A. And now that I live in Florida, I'm actually busier now than I was in L.A. because I'm booking more like I don't I just want to work like I don't care what it doesn't have to be a huge film like I do commercials since I moved to Florida. I probably shot like 40 commercials. And so that's like I'm not doing as much that kind of like scripted acting anymore. I'm doing more commercial acting, which is great. And it's amazing and it makes me so happy and I'm still doing a lot of print work so no it doesn't really like I just show up and if they want me they want me if they don't they don't that's great I was actually going to ask you um commercial stuff that sounds like fun but what is that like because when you show up I mean you're kind of being judged on like what you look like how you talk and that can be really difficult how do you kind of overcome those feelings of okay I'm not enough because of what I look like or how I sound or whatever. Like, how do you overcome that? I guess feeling of rejection, maybe. It is rejection. I mean, I, because I've been doing it for so long, I'm about to be 32. (laughs) (laughs) Don't feel that old. But I think pageants probably helped me prepare for that because it was like getting thrown into the lion's den in terms of judgment. Oh, yeah. With auditions, I kind of, I mean, I've done a lot of work on myself over the years to understand that, it's not really rejection. It's like, I wasn't right for the part and that's okay. Like I don't, I don't view, I don't go back and dwell on why didn't they book me? 
I, you know, I was nervous or I forgot a line in my audition. Like I'm able now to just kind of move on to the next thing. But I know some people really struggle with it. I just view it as like, I wasn't right. Like, and I might be right for the next one. Like, thankfully there's so many auditions and I'm, I'm at a place where I have great relationships with the casting directors where I live. So I know I have the confidence knowing that there's going to be another opportunity. Exactly. That's a great way to look at it. And I think that's that's probably the right way to look at it, even in other things in life that, you know what, I just wasn't right for this particular thing. It's not necessarily something I did or said or how I looked. I just nope. wasn't the right fit. Yeah. And sometimes if you're just not feeling it, they're going to pick up on that energy and it's fine. Like there's going to be another opportunity. Like I always think that like, but some people, yeah, I don't know. Some people just, they dwell on it. And I have, like when I first got started, if there was like a really big job that I wanted, like I can still remember a few films where <laughs> they called me and I was like next in line. Like it was, they had casted another girl, but if she said no, it was going to be me. Like I was always the next one. Oh. And that really sucks. <laughs> but I, yeah, I used to go back and just stalk the girl who would get the role. I'm like, how, what did she do differently? What, why wasn't I, you know, good enough? But now I think I'm just more mature and I can let things roll off a little bit easier these days. Mm, well, that's good. That's, I think that just happens probably with age of us, like experiencing life and knowing that not everything rests on one opportunity or one thing. But I think as well, when you said like stalking the girl, part of that is probably just like our feeling of what can I do to be better? How can I be better? And it's not necessarily just like, I want to be her. It's like, I want to be able to, you know, have that success or something. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a little bit of jealousy, honestly. Yeah. Like, I grow up looking things and I'm like, oh, I really want that. But I think I just have so much self love and like love for myself that I'm so sure that I'm in the right place right now. And I'm doing exactly what I need to be doing. I love that. And speaking of jealousy, your yeah. significant other is one of the <laughs> most well known, accomplished golfers in the world my my i'm gonna say my brother was kind of fangirling over the fact that you're somehow associated to brooks kepka do you ever have feelings of jealousy and if so how do you overcome those feelings um jealousy in what way like girls he's bit dated or just his success or in what way i guess maybe just knowing that he is you know so many people like look up to him and they want to know him and you know we just oh. want to have some kind of in in touch with him you know I think it's great. No, I think he and I make such a good team. And when he wins, I i mean, I think because our careers are so different. Like, I can't be jealous of his golf success because I don't even know how to play golf. <laughs> um, no, yeah, I think i he makes me feel so secure and he supports me equally as much as I support him. So whenever he wins, it's like a win for the both of us. And girls, of course, girls are in his DMs and he's an attractive man. He has so much success and so much confidence, but I never feel insecure about that just because of how strong we are as a couple. And we've been together for so long, like maybe in the beginning, it was kind of nerve wracking because we were just starting out dating and I wasn't sure how to navigate all of this, but we're coming up on four years, like next year. So we've got it pretty much dialed in now. And he makes me feel like if, and, and we have an open line of communication. Like if I see something or I can say something, if you see something, say something. Yeah. Like if there's a girl, you know, that would comment on something. I'd be like, who is that? Or, you know, he's like, I have no idea. Right. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think it's really important because if not, it'll fester. And then that's when the jealousy becomes an issue. That's true. And I think part of it is probably that you're so secure in who you are, what you're doing. You have your own things and and it's not going to bother you the way it would bother some people. But I, I love that. Yeah. Insecurity is probably one of the most least attractive things that another person can have. And the, my confidence didn't happen like overnight. I've done some severe work on myself to get to where I am, because <laughs> especially when we first started dating, we just had all these sort of viral moments that would sort of tear a person down. And I've just, I mean, I've been to therapy. I'm like completely changed like my outlook and who I am as a person. That's awesome. And tell me a little bit more than you've been to therapy for kind of yourself, your well being. Like, tell me more about that. What made sure. <laughs> it has nothing to do with Brooks, no, 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 <laughs> no. Yeah. But just bettering um, yourself. 
No, it's yeah, it was so funny. One of the girls last night at Miss USA, her question was like mental health. Mm -hmm. And her answer was just like, it should just be a part of our health. It's not like a, if you have a problem, you go see a therapist. It's like something that I decided to do a year ago just because it's healthy and it's really, really helped how I handle certain situations. And even I used to have just like a huge fear of like confrontation. Like I was scared if I was like confrontational about something that, you know, someone might not like me or, you know, even with Brooks, I was like, it just took me, I, it took me a while to get to a point where I was okay with confrontation. And maybe that's the pageantry in me just <laughs> wanting to be perfect all the time. Um, I had to really like break, break all that down to be vulnerable around, you know, all of my relationships. And it's really, really helped with that. That's awesome. That's good to hear. And I, I love that you're saying that it should just be part of our everyday health. Like, Ooh, what's wrong? Why are you, what are you talking about in therapy? I'm like, it's, it's not for a problem. It's for just my overall health. Absolutely. And I think more of us need to do that and see it that way because it is like, it's something like, like you said, Oh, you go to therapy. Like what's the problem? What's wrong? And it's like, no, I just want to be able to live life to the fullest, be able to handle confrontation. I don't think anyone likes confrontation. So if, yeah. if we can handle like, those, Oh, sorry. You learn just sort of how to like things you can say, or, you know, I feel this <laughs> like, you know, rather than <laughs> you're doing this, like the way to approach things. Right. Exactly. Yep. That's so that's very important. And it's good to talk about because I think seeing somebody in your position who's had so much success in your career to know that you have done all these things to work on yourself. You didn't just show up and everything is amazing. Like you've had to do some behind the scenes work to be who oh, you are. Absolutely. Like whenever, gosh, I guess 2018 when Brooks won the PGA, this was kind of a big like I had to kind of look at myself because I was a little bit insecure when he won because I got that there was like a viral moment where I was caught not caught but it was a still shot from a video where I was looking at Tiger Woods and I just got attacked on the internet like attacked like she's you know she's in love up, with Tiger or some yeah, bullshit stuff. like look how she's looking at Tiger and Brooke should be so mad and just, <laughs> his win like yeah his exciting win almost got overshadowed it did not get overshadowed but there it what should have been a moment of celebration was sort of this negative moment about me looking at tiger woods and at the time i was like really devastated by what everyone was saying about me but then brooks like he was so wonderful he was like like don't listen to what these people are saying i know that's not true you know that's not true and he was a big help in sort of helping me see it in a different light because i was like absorbing all of this negative oh yeah hate I was receiving and that was probably the first moment where I sort of turned and I was like you know what I'm so sure of myself and who I am like everything that all these people are saying it, it's not true and I'm very thankful that I had him to sort of help me he's like fuck them really yeah. you know <laughs> <laughs> I love it it's true but yeah. and, and like honestly let's be real if any of us were walking down the street and saw Tiger Woods or like Oprah Winfrey like <laughs> We'd be like, again, exactly, like jaw yeah. dropping, like, holy shit, look at, there's I, that person, right? So, <laughs> like, growing up, like, I definitely, he was one of my, the athletes I looked up to, like, Chipper Jones, Tiger Woods, Michael Jordan. They're the greats. Exactly. Exactly. I, I, mean, actually, I mean, it was kind of unfortunate because I had met him like several times before that moment, but I think it was because Brooks had just won the tournament and Tiger came up and hugged me and like congratulated me. I was more shocked that he did that. Yeah. Then it wasn't the fact that he was just staying there. It was that he just hugged me and congratulated me and like sort of recognized that I was a part of that team. Yeah. And I mean, your, your boyfriend just won one of the well, one of the biggest yeah. tournaments in the world. It's like, duh, you're going to be a little like in shock. But that's one of the sad things is that, like you said, it didn't overshadow his win by any means, but that they're highlighting something so stupid. It felt like it for me because it was one of the first times I'd been attacked on such a level. I was like, I just felt 
you know, like it was just all imploding on me. But in that, in actuality, it really wasn't. But it, for me, it just felt like that in the moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's hard to overcome some of those things. I don't know how much you know about me, but I competed at Miss Universe in, yeah, in early 2017, technically 2016. Yeah. And people around the world were calling me like Miss Piggy Queen, whale, fat. And even though I knew those things, or I didn't feel that those things were true, it's hard to not let those opinions like come onto you and then have the way that you look at yourself in the mirror impact you, right? Like, oh wait, did I look at that person that way? Do I look this way? And it can be very hard to overcome that. But having um, supports in your life, like saying no, I know you're not like that, or you don't look like that, or you didn't do that. It's really important. It's just, it's bizarre to me, the amount of strangers that feel like their opinion is, they're entitled to have their opinion and to like, make, like throw it at you basically. And all these people like hiding behind their cell phones, like no one, like I get so much hate like on Instagram and like articles and stuff, but no one does it in person. Like no. in person, come up to me, oh my God, we love you and Brooks together. Y'all are amazing. You're amazing. I love what you do. You're, you're killing it. Like, why do they feel that because they can hide behind a phone screen that they can just be so awful? I think that, no, I I know. I think part of it, honestly, is that people don't like to see others succeeding, especially women. They don't want to see you succeeding in your own career and being happy because obviously they might not feel that way about themselves. And that's always the way. I mean, I say that in almost every chat that I do with anyone, whether it be on a podcast or in person, that these people who are trying to shed their negativity they themselves are wanting to see us come down to their level, even just a notch. They want to see us, you know, be impacted by that. Actually, today somebody messaged me and I put us, I try to not use filters as much as I can on, on Instagram stories just to like show the real me, you know? Yeah. And somebody said something like, yeah, you know, you're looking really tired and haggard. <laughs> that's so I was like, you know, that's, that's what concealer is for. <laughs> tired I yeah I could use an extra 10 hours of sleep thank you for reminding me exactly but it's, it is so funny how people feel that right to their opinions to be shared we do have a right to our opinion but yeah. sometimes we don't need to share that opinion exactly what I've learned especially since I brought up the therapy thing um in terms of judgment usually when someone is judging another person it's something that they don't like about themselves that they see in this other person like I got called um annoying by like a lot of people like oh she looks so annoying and I'm like and thinking about it, I'm like well yeah I guess I have been annoying in my life but the person calling me that there's no way that this person hasn't been annoying at least once in their life so it's usually what I've learned is if they're calling you a name or judging you for something it's something they're like projecting onto you that they don't like about themselves that's and that's really helped me <laughs> that's really that's actually really powerful and so First of all, how the hell does someone look annoying? I don't understand. But also <laughs> when Brooks, like this was in when he won something, but I get excited. I talk with my hands. People are like, are you from New York? Because you use your hands like all the time. I'm like, no, I'm a Georgia peach. <laughs> <laughs> but it's yeah, I think it's because I was just like so excited. And I like probably ran out and like hugged him. And I'm just I'm excitable. Like I'm not going to hide my excitement for anything. Nor should you. Yeah, they were like, she's an annoying sorority girl. I'm like, no. oh my gosh. <laughs> no, I got kicked out of my sorority in college. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh that's it, it is just so sad though because to be honest I don't feel like people try to bring down men the same way that they do to women they don't pick these little things apart they're not calling men haggard and tired on Instagram like they only do it to women and sadly enough it is a lot of times women taking down other women like oh she's is annoying or this or that when if anyone was in that position they would be just as excited for their partner like it's just so silly and so sad and I I still question I'm like why is it that us women don't want to celebrate each other and rather than calling someone a name why can't we be like yes girl like go get it like I'd be just as excited what is that I'm especially a big fan of the women supporting women movement especially like the Sports Illustrated swim which you're you're perfect for with I mean everything like body inclusivity everything they stand for is just amazing to me and I love that they have such a large platform of women supporting other women because I try to do that. Like I have such a good group of friends around me. We, if somebody does something, I'm, I'm always congratulations. Like I think women should be so celebrated because it's 2020 it's time. Like, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. That it is. It's, it is sad sometimes to think that like other women don't want that 
success for the others but I think some of it I was talking to a girl the other day about this it's like that almost like scarcity mindset that like well if she has this that means I can't have it right me. Yep. yes yes and it's it is like whether it be an opportunity a person it's like okay if she's getting it if she's she has it for some reason that means that I also can't have that and I, I read this quote somewhere it's something along, along the lines of be the woman who mentions another woman's name in a room full of opportunities or something oh, like that that's amazing I love that I love that because I'm like that's exactly what we need and I think the more we lift each other up and celebrate each other the better off all of us are going to be there is enough out there for everybody to win it is so true and I guess in the pageant world there's definitely that scarcity mindset because there's only <laughs> one title right whether it be Miss USA Miss Teen USA Miss Universe Miss Georgia Teen USA when you were at Miss Teen USA was that your that was your last pageant like com competition no, oh. I, I know. I thought I was going to be done forever. Um, but I actually competed in Miss California, USA, okay. my last year of eligibility. And it's actually one of my biggest regrets because oh. I had so much fun. I, I did it literally when I was like 26. I was aging out. Oh. And I, did it, I was like one last hoorah. And I got um, top 10, I think, at Miss California, USA, which is great for my first year. But And that's a hard, I judge that competition. It's very hard. Yeah, once I aged out, I was like, dang, like, I wish I would have done that again. Yeah, you would have been amazing. And maybe if you would have done it, maybe you would have done Miss Georgia USA and then represented Georgia, I, right? That was another one. I was like, I should have done Georgia. But that's okay. What, so <laughs> did, like, Southern girl. <laughs> what year did you compete? That was 2015 or 2014. Okay, so it would have been either. Yeah, Olivia Jordan was the one who won Miss USA 2015. So oh, it was um, whoever maybe after that 20 oh after 2016 would have been I don't remember who won Miss California yeah I can't remember who's California I just know that Olivia Jordan won Miss USA yeah and she originally um did Miss California and then she went back to her home state of Oklahoma won Miss and then, Oklahoma and then won Miss USA maybe it was 2014 I can't remember okay Nia Sanchez was Miss USA that year. The only reason I know all these things so much is because on my YouTube channel, I talk about pageants all the time. And I know more about pageants now than I did competing, which I find hilarious. But anyways, yeah, really. yes, yes, because it's, yeah, it's something I talk about all the time, which I just didn't expect that to happen. But anyways, back to the pageant space. What is, like, people, when I talk to them, at least here in Canada, they don't even know that, like, Miss Universe is a thing, Miss USA, they have no idea. And they always think that pageants are like Miss Congeniality, waving on stage, all this bogus. And in Canada as well, people only know Miss Universe because of the Steve Harvey mix up. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> and so what would you want people to know about pageants? That it isn't just about what you look like on the outside, especially now that I've been on the other side of it, judging it, like hearing what they're actually looking for is like, the X factor, someone who has the charisma, someone that can command a room, someone that's able to lead a state and set an example just for, I mean, Miss Universe, for the whole world. It's not what you look like on the outside. It's literally what you plan to do with the title and how your credentials and how what makes you a good candidate to be a role model for everyone. And I hate to use that word role model and world peace and all of that <laughs> stuff, but it truly is like what, like, are you a role model is really what it boils down to for me. Yeah, I like that. I think that's that's awesome. I so wish that you would have been able to do like Georgia USA because I think you would have been an amazing, you could have won Miss USA. But you know what? Honestly, things always happen for a reason. And oh, I'm sure whatever was. I was rocking and rolling in my career when I was in the prime. When I, when I was 22, 23, 24, I was booking moves left and right. I was like, pageants were on the back burner. I didn't even think about it. I didn't start thinking about it again until my career sort of started slowing down a little bit. And I was like, hmm. Maybe. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think looking back, it's so easy to be like, oh, I should have done this. I could have done that. Even myself, I'm like, I was so fortunate to represent Canada at Miss Universe, but I still look back. I'm like, oh, I should have done this. I, I could have had a different, you know, it's, I think that's just, probably partially normal with us you know we like look yeah. back and you know those you, uh, won, you won the Miss USA of your country so you already made it <laughs> oh well yeah well thanks but here it's honestly nobody even knows and it's like yeah it's it's just funny how pageants are viewed here as something that's so ancient and prehistoric and just like what yeah it's so funny people in here in the states they still don't know the difference between Miss USA and Miss America so they're like <laughs> There are, when I said I did Miss Teen USA, they're like, what's your talent? I'm like, it's, oh, it's yes. 
one like all the time all the time people ask that here all the time for like yeah. a missed title I'm like there isn't a talent sorry like, um, they don't have any talent I'm like it's not about that like it, yes, I'm a woman of many talents but this one does not have a talent competition absolutely and so, well speaking of pageants something I want to talk about because it's so incredible so amazing you started when you were still in high school the pageant of hope <gasps> Baby. <laughs> so cool. Tell us about that. I've read and heard you talk about it, but I want you from your words to be able to tell totally. people about it. I started the pageant of hope, gosh, 2004. Um, prior to that, I lost my grandfather's to cancer and I just had several people in my life who were affected by cancer. And so I started raising money for American Cancer Society. And I was super passionate about at a young age, like finding a cure for cancer. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started doing pageants and I just realized how much self-confidence pageantry taught me and it just what it did for like my stage presence, my communication and just hearing my name like as a winner, even in the teen pageants, like it really changed my life. Like it just brought me so much happiness and so much confidence. So I kind of combined my two loves of working with sick children and pageants. And so I created a pageant. Initially, it was a pageant for children with cancer. Um, but the catch is everyone leaves a winner. So, so we do. Well, so now it's a pageant for what I say is like children facing challenges, children who wouldn't normally compete in pageants. I've been to like orphanages all around the world. I've worked with, you know, children with disabilities, children with cancer, just anyone who needs that extra boost of self-confidence. Mm -hmm. um, but it's girls and boys. We come in, we give them like a makeover. We do the nails, the hair. We do a, like a mock interview. Oh my and God, it, that's so yeah, cute. So we take the pageant walk and then we actually put on a whole pageant and we have like celebrity judges. And um, at the end of the day, everyone leaves a winner. So we crown every single person, which is great. So no one's getting judged. Yes. Um, <laughs> But we have like titles like best hair, best smile, and then everyone gets a sash and a crown and like a little certificate. So that I'm crown. I'm trying to think now. I mean, I've held pageants. I've been to Africa twice. I've been to Australia, Cuba, like all over the United States, um, the Bahamas recently. This year, I couldn't really do anything, but mm -hmm. we have a plan for how we're going to handle that this year. But um, all over the world, I mean, I've probably crowned like 5,000 plus kids. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That is incredible. I, mean, I love that. Love yeah. That is so I cool. I actually haven't even thought about how many, but this year we're actually doing, um, we work with a, a, a village in Nassau um, in the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. And so we're, since we can't go there this year. We actually came up with the idea of doing pageant in a box. So I'm doing these like branded pageant of hope boxes that there's a crown, the sash, there's like little makeup kits and like little nail polish. Oh. And we're going to, like send them, send each of these kids in the village a pageant in a box so they can do it at home. That is so sweet. Have you ever done it in Canada? Um, no. <gasps> well, maybe we'll have to do something. That That'd is, be that would it's be so good. Part, yeah, the hardest part for me is actually finding somewhere to do it, like a hospital that's yeah. agreeing to like have, you know, five beauty queens. My team were all former pageant winners. Awesome. Um, my, the actual nonprofit's called um, HBBQ, which is Has Been Beauty Queens. Right. That is so cool. Uh, I love it. One of the like, not my personal qualifications, but I think it's important for my girls to have won a pageant so they can know what it's like so that we can build the excitement of passing on that winning feeling to these children. I love that. I would love to get involved in any way that I can be helpful or something because I think I've seen, I mean, just like you firsthand, like the joy it brings to people and to be able to have that feeling of winning a crown, winning a sash, whatever it may be. I think that's just, I absolutely love it. It's great. I mean, it literally, I get letters and like, it's like messages of like, I wore my crown to school or I have never taken this thing off. Like just everything, like how much happiness it brings to them. It just, it warms my heart. Like I cry at every single pageant. I'm like, this is just the greatest <laughs> <thing> ever. <laughs> I I love that. That is so sweet. I actually felt a little teary eyed when you were talking about the kids and like, and then potentially opening the boxes, like how exciting that would be for them. And it's sometimes it is those little things that someone will never forget that like that young person will always remember that moment. And that's what you're bringing to them is that might seem small, but that mm -hmm. could help carry them through so many maybe challenges or yeah, just have them look at that and be like, oh. Like yeah, I haven't even thought about this in a while, but when we first started and we were working with children with cancer, 
um, obviously they don't all make it. And um, oh. one of the girls, she was, I mean, she was pretty advanced and um, she had a brain cancer of some sort and she got to participate in, um, it, we had the event, I think in like November around Thanksgiving in my home state in, well, in Georgia. And um, she ended up passing away, I think like maybe the spring of the following year. And I actually went to her funeral and she had like a slideshow of like the pageant, like she, the, her family said that the pageant of hope was like her last like good memory. And she was actually buried like with her crown that she won. And I was oh like, my God. I'm doing this the rest of my life. Like if I'm providing like such positive oh memory, these kids can't do sports. They can't do dance. Like pageants are such low, you know, energy, low impact, like walking across the stage is so easy for, or even like this girl was in a wheelchair, like just being she able can to do it. it. She can do it. They can totally do it. And it's something that we're in the audience. The parents can take pictures and give them flowers and they make posters. And just knowing that I gave her one of her last like positive memories, like it makes me want to do it forever and ever and ever and ever. No kidding. Oh my gosh. That gives me goosebumps. That's I know, absolutely I have incredible. To bring, oh. just remembering it. Yeah. Cause I had no idea. Like, and I went, it was like open casket and I saw <gasps> it and like her crown was there and I was like, that's the pageant of hope crown like oh my gosh. her parents were like yeah she wanted to be buried like with her crown I was like oh my god that is incredible and see that I just think that's a beautiful amazing story that you were able to share into what you've done like obviously you're not you know sharing this to like boast about like oh look what I've done for these young kids but I think no, it just shows okay. the importance and value yeah no in, in the impact yeah the impact that's right the lasting impact and then the thing too is not only did that impact her life and that was so positive for her her family is always gonna remember that do you remember when she was on stage and we had the signs for her she was crowned like they will always have those memories and that is absolutely priceless I still follow her mom on Instagram, so I still like keep in touch like with her family. That is so sweet. That's amazing. Is there anything else like in that, like something that you've seen from the pageant space that you've really seen it positively impact people's lives like that, even if it's like maybe for, like competitors or something? Um. Yeah, I guess the, the volunteers on my end, like if it's a first time, you know, volunteering at one of these things, they they go into it just thinking like it's going to be a fun day. And then by the end of it, once they start crowning the kids and the kids are just squeezing them and hugging them and taking selfies with them. And they all at the end of the day, they're like, I had no idea. Like, I thought I was going to be helping these kids. But in turn, it did so much for me. So Absolutely. it's like a win. Like literally, it's a win. Everybody's winning. <laughs> Everybody's winning. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. That is so sweet. And I guess okay, a different turn of it, of events. Social media. You're on social yeah. media. You have an Instagram. You have stories. We talked a little bit about TikTok. Social media with young people today is a bit of a challenge because I find social media is a great way to be able to share messages important important to us, things that we value, um, getting our opinions out there. But it can also be pretty detrimental to our mental health, to our confidence, comparison, likes, all that. Comparison is the thief of joy. That is right. That is one of my favorite quotes. Good job. Yes. I love that. <laughs> Me too. It's true, though, because we can't. I mean, maybe this is also what we've learned from pageantry is that we like by comparing ourselves, it does nothing for us. It actually does nothing to move us forward how we think of another woman in the competition isn't going to do anything with how the judges view us so mm -hmm. it really is the thief of joy the thief of so many things what is, I, get, I get so many messages of like how, how do you work out what do you eat they just mm -hmm. want to know every little thing to like i'm like a lot of this is just genetics and there's so much that people like it is it's just comparison i'm like Please, I'm like, I try to like grace is one of my favorite words. Like give your body, give yourself some grace. Like don't be so obsessed with like, you know, another celebrity, a Kardashian or whatever it may be. Like you have the body, you have the cards you were dealt. Like I think the important message to get out is just to love what you've got and just love yourself and give yourself some grace because it's hard out there. <laughs> <laughs> it is hard out there. It's true. Yeah. It yeah. is. It is true. And I think all of that thrives. Like, um, you know, I admire the Kardashians for different reasons, the way they've been able to turn things into a business. But the Kardashian culture, diet culture, all of that is so hard on women. And it thrives 
off of comparison. It thrives off of us wanting to look like the next person. And that's how it keeps going because we will never look. There's a lot of false information out there. Like girls are getting work done and they're selling a certain type of workout or whatever they're doing skincare and they've got all this facial work done. It's, it's a lot of false information. And I think the consumers aren't fully aware of that. They think they can do, you know, buy this, you know, protein shake and you're going to have a big butt, like (laughs) whoever, but yeah, I just wish people were more, a little more truthful on there, which is what I try to do. Like when I promote like skincare, Mm -hmm. I will be like, oh, I've done, this is where I get my fillers. I've had Botox. I've had IPL. I've had all these other types of lasers on my face, but this is the type of skincare I also use. (laughs) And I will put where I go, my doctor's name. I, I'm comfortable talking about anything I've had done to my body because I, I just feel like transparency is so rare these days. And if I'm promoting something, I want you to know the full story. I 100% agree. And I think that's why people value so much when people are transparent because it is so rare. And I think sometimes people will be shocked like, oh my God, she's had Botox or this or that. Or I've had this thing done where they like cut my, um, I forget what it's called, but it had it relaxed my upper lip so that I didn't have to get fillers to have a fuller upper lip. Long kind of story. But when I shared that, I had a mix of reactions. Some people were like, wait, you've had work done. And other people were like, thank you so much for your transparency. It's appreciated that you didn't just put on this plumping lip gloss and that's how yep. you got that, right? <laughs> yeah, it's just, I think people have such a negative connotation with filler, like injectables and all that stuff. Cause they think that you're gonna come out looking like a cat or, <laughs> you know, <laughs> certain people definitely overdo it. And that's yes. what you- not enough people who just get the bare minimum, which is what I think I, I, I try to go for like more of a natural look. Like Yes, you look very not- natural. Thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I'm in the mirror going, can I still move my eyebrows? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think not enough people know that you don't have to go overboard with it. Absolutely. I love that. And I think that it, it's really, really important as well to show that um, like we're all we're all real. Okay, okay. Well, let's end on a fun, positive note. You have an adorable dog named Cove. So I so cute. Yeah. I I have a golden retriever named Ted. So I always love hearing about other people's dog stories. Tell us a little bit about Cove. Like maybe like a funny or fun story or something like that. Cove is our daughter. <laughs> um, I have so many. Like, we I wish she could travel with us, but. Mm. We kind of failed. I want to say like dogs are like pancakes. You always mess the first one. (laughs) Um, She was so cute as a puppy. We just had a really hard time disciplining her, which Mm. I fear for our future children one day because we had a really hard time disciplining her. We just can't say no. Like, and people are like, does she potty in the house? I'm like, no, she's fully potty trained. She's amazing. But she drags me down the street on a leash and she barks when literally any human being walks by and she jumps and she's so excitable. So we can't really travel with her full time. Um, And I wish we could because she literally is like a therapy dog. Like she brings so much joy. Like when Brooks walks in the door, she just lights off and just, ah, just like freaks out. (laughs) That's so cute. I love that. Like I have friends who have like these perfect dogs and someone will walk in the door and they'll just be sitting there like so perfect. And I'm like, what's the point of having a dog? Yeah, that's no fun. And she sleeps with us and she'll cry in the middle of the night if she has to go out. So she's not really trained enough to travel full time with us, but I wish she kind of was because it'd be so much fun to have her here. But when we're at home, like we can't keep her out of the pool. She's a water dog. I guess, I guess one funny story is she knows when I have a bathing suit on that she's going to go in the pool. Like I can have a sports bra, a sports bra and a bikini to me are very similar. And I'll put a sports bra on and she will not even be phased. But when I start putting a bikini on, she has a a meltdown, like an actual (laughs) meltdown. And she knows that I'm, we're about to go in the pool. That is so cute. I wish we had a pool. Our dog would also love a pool. He loves swimming in the ocean here. It is, I just love that. I think it's so much fun when dogs, they're like not perfect because we aren't perfect. Like we cannot be perfectly trained, right? Same with children. There are people who, you know, sleep train and do these different things. I 100% am not about that life. I thought I would be more strict, but I'm like very much attachment parent, very much. Um, But anyways, I I just think that's so fun when the dog is like so excited, loves swimming. I think that's, that's so cute. It brings so much joy. 
she'll shake like she gets she'll jump in the pool and she'll come out and shake all over us and get us soaking wet i mean it's just it's fun like, it's fun like, yeah that's so cool. okay one last question a little bit more serious kind of what piece of advice would you want to tell your younger self well other than start acting classes sooner than yes. i did <laughs> <laughs> um, i think um the it's so hard to say like be yourself but i think the real me more people love the real me versus the pageant like even pageantry sometimes you feel like you have to put on and be on for sure and be all the time i think i'm just now getting to a point where i can be 100 percent real around people and i wish I, I could just bag that up and give that to my younger self because i probably blew just so many auditions and so many opportunities are just trying to like be the perfect miss georgia yes where instead of just settling into who i actually am which i'm quirky i'm out there i'm nerdy a little bit you know <laughs> anxious and like i'm just like a, i'm a, a, just a weird human being yes wish, like in a good way and i wish i could have just ex accepted me for who i was just a little bit sooner in life i love that that's beautiful that's so important to hear and i think that's what so many of us probably would want to know is just to like be all be those things you. that are yeah be us in a way that isn't impacted by what society wants us to be what pageants want us to be like just be truly who we are, say what we want within reason, of course, and just yeah, hey, just yeah. be just be ourselves to the point of allowing other people to see the true the true us. And may, it's okay to make mistakes. Like if I, I used to be so hard on myself to if I just messed up in anything, and now like I just it's the grace. Like give yourself some grace. Like nobody's perfect. Like no one nobody is perfect and the thing like with someone like you you've been in the spotlight of say making some of those mistakes which weren't even mistakes like some of the stories that you shared with us today like it's just so silly but anyways thank you so I much oh it's my embarrassing moments it's not like a mistake it was just like an embarrassing yeah. moment that was on an international level like the whole world got to see some of my most embarrassing moments <laughs> yeah but even the one you're talking about like with the, the tiger woods thing like i don't even understand how that would be like why did people make that embarrassing like if you were looking with whatever whatever look it was like it's just so it goofy <laughs> like i would be the exact same way i would probably be even more like oh my god like there this man i've seen on tv for like 20 plus years like there he is you know anyway Thank you so much for being so open and honest and I appreciate all your stories. You're just, you're incredible and I, I hope you have a wonderful week. Thanks for listening to Universally Judged. Be sure to subscribe to our show and leave us a review. If you want more great content, find us on Instagram at Universally Judged. See you next week.